Hi guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we'll be talking about Substance Painter 2019.1, the first release after they've been bought by Adobe. Amazing, amazing features have been brought in here. And in today's video, what we're going to do is talk about all of these features. So in case you don't have Substance, in case you're new to Substance, you don't need to worry because I'll do my best to cover these things as much as I can for each of the features that have been released with this new version. Among the things which we'll cover will include the UI, the displacement, compare mass, dynamic structure, projection and so on and so forth so without further ado let's go ahead and start off with the ui and all of the improvements that have been made with this new release let's get started once you look at the ui you would notice that this here the tools here have something different and this simply suggests that these tools that you have here or these brushes that you have here supports the dynamic stroke. So I'm going to start off by just simply loading the very, you know, standard preview sphere. You know, this guy has always been the culprit. So I'm just going to go ahead and use him or use it for whatever I want to do. So here you can see that we're having the uh, anisotropic thing going on here. I'm going to turn off the angle, turn off the turn off the level, just turn these things off, and also. Let's actually start with the UI. You would notice right out of the bat that it has the Photoshop thing. So I did um, a news where I covered this, so you can check that out. You can see it has this Photoshop style thing, and it doesn't end here. So once you click and drag, it closes, and you know you can click and drag to open again. Very very Adobe-like, and you know other things you would find out is now if you go over to this part within the shader setting. And by the way, if you cannot find the shader setting, you can find those things from here where you have the window. You know, you can go to two, I mean, uh, views and you can find those here. So within the shader setting here, you find out that we now have this other button that suggests displacement and tessellation, All right? So displacement and tessellation now happens and we're going to talk about that real quick. So first of all, before we actually start talking about the displacement and tessellation, I'll go over here and just simply drop in a very, very empty layer. So I'm just dropping in this empty layer so that we can talk about these things. These guys have gone ahead to add a lot of filters, not so much though. So they've added a couple of filters. So if I click here, you can see you have varieties of filters. They added, I think, two extra um, environment they added this I think this is a new environment and I guess this is also another new environment yes of course you can still use your right click to you know toggle around to see what you have those things still work every single thing still works properly the materials they've added a couple of materials and still speaking of UI you would notice that all of these now you can see them all of these materials they have a tiny button there so this simply suggests that this material includes randomness which is also part of the dynamic stroke and this one simply suggests that this material has a dynamic stroke so once you see this dynamic stroke once you see this has randomness added to it all right so we would start off with the very first one which they demoed and we will talk about it once you click on this which is called the gradient hue we can go all the way down i kind of like having this stacked up so i'm just going to drag that all the way up and you can see that we have properties here so i will start off by just simply painting and also i think it will be worth it for you guys to know that the dynamic stroke respects pen pressure so if i just i'm using a pen here so i'm just going to go ahead and just slide slowly and you can see and if i start punching it a bit down you're going to notice I'm having significant differences. I'm going to explain this to you guys now. So with this dynamic stroke turned on, I want you guys to notice two things. The pen pressure of course is there, but if I'm going slowly, I'm having more color bleed out. So I'm just gonna do that again. So you can see I'm having more color bleed out, but if I'm going through a very, uh, if I'm punching it a bit hard, I'm having less color bleeding out. So this is also something else that you know you can you can play with. They have a setting here though, so you can choose uh, to make use of a random index, or you can choose uh, from beginning, right? You can also choose the color offsets depending on uh, the color range offsets you want to use. You can slide through and you'll be able to start from one. Right now it's starting all the way from red, which is this one, 
you can slide through and you know you can start with a different color so i'm just going to undo this by hitting ctrl z and yeah so if i start drawing around you'll begin to notice that i'm painting with the height right now and you can see all those randomness happening okay you can see i'm having this random thing going on so this is best if you're painting cracks and stuff this would definitely help you so instead of you know creating a set of map and or maybe set of alpha and you go ahead and start finding a way to tune them tile them add noise and all that stuff those boring things you can just simply use this and get very quick stuff going on and this also respects pen pressure you can see now we're done with this let's move on to the next exciting thing which has to do with displacement i think for me displacement is like the best thing ever because i kind of um hustle with um working with lower geometries against higher geometries so displacement and i guess a lot of artists also hustle with doing that so uh, displacement is a very amazing thing to see here, especially the fact that you can paint your displacements here in real time and still see it. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the brushes. And yes, speaking about the brushes, there is an improvement to the brush line. So you can see there are a couple of brushes. All right. So this also has to do with um, the dynamic stroke. So there are a couple of brushes you can find here. You would be able to have a lot of fun using them, a lot of fun using them. So for this one, I would just simply select a very soft brush. And then without anything selected, I will just scale this bad boy up and bring him down a bit. And let's position this that way. I think it makes sense to look that way. All right. So for this now, what we need to do is we will come over to this uh, shader setting and we need to make sure that displacement is enabled. So with displacement enabled, you can choose where you want your height, your, your displacement to be driven from. So if you want it to be driven from the height, good and fine. If you want it to be driven from displacement, awesome. So we're just going to set this to height. Actually, we're going to try the both of them so you guys can see. And for this subdivision count, you can go ahead and increase this. Now, if you're using Maya or any other software, I think I covered a couple of displacement in the channel check this out and you'll be able to tie these two together so why i'm saying this is in case you want to run exactly the same results you're having here you would need to make sure that you're having the same subdivision which you're having here in those dcc apps so let's say in maya once you're doing your subdivision with cat clack or something and the same thing with blender if you're using the displacement modifier or so on you need to make sure that you have i think the same uh, subdivision count that's the best way you can get exactly the same result here so for this scale i'm just going to drop this scale let's actually have fun and drop this to one all right and i'm just going to keep this about i think i should keep that there cool for what i have here which is the height all right so i have this as the height i am just going to jump back to the alpha and let's see if we can pick a cool alpha we can work with and speaking about alphas, there is also uh, improvements for the alpha. You can see they have some uh, extra alphas there. I'm just going to pick this very smooth brush. I think that would be cool. All right. So I'm picking that as the alpha and I want to work with this. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and increase this. Okay. So now I have this increased. I'm just going to go ahead and turn this down. You know, because whenever the height is at zero, nothing is happening. Once it is by negative, it is going to go down all right now if you want to get a good idea about this i covered a video called introduction to hypershade where i explained why this happens so once it's black it is at ground zero and once you begin to move towards white from the gray all the way to white it begins to go all the way up so your values increase as this increases positively and your values decrease as this decreases you know so we're going to use this and i'm just going to go ahead and do that so we're not getting a lot of details so i'm going to do that ctrl z this and then start painting and now you can see that we're having displacement 
A good thing I would also say is you can see that there is an improvement with the viewport rendering. I cannot say enough for this one. The improvement for the viewport rendering is so, so awesome, guys. So let me go ahead and find another brush. So let's say we get a brush like... Um, Okay, so maybe we can get a brush like this. I don't know. Maybe we can get a brush like that. Maybe that brush would be cool. I've not tried it before. We're just gambling right now. And I'm going to just simply right click, drop down the brush size, and start painting. All right? Make sure this is turned on, or else you're going to get some negative values. All right, so I can start painting that there. And you can see we're having real time displacement. I'm turning that down. I can go ahead and turn this up. And you can see we're having real time displacement happening here and if you're wondering why we're having these facets here it is because within this part where we have our subdivision count we don't have a lot so you need to be uh, able to make sure that you have a lot of subdivision going on there and also the brush you need to use matters a lot so if you're making use of a brush try and make sure that you have a brush that is not so thick a brush that has some sort of um soft lapses at the edge so that you can have a much more smoother transition there so this exactly is the displacement that exists and you know you can still choose to say you don't want to drive this by height you want to drive this by the displacement and you notice that if i just rotate my mouse now that if i just rotate this right now this has automatically changed to just a simple height and no longer displacement and how can you drive this with displacement instead of height? So let's say you want to make a, a multi-map, right? So we are going to go ahead and turn this height off. And once we do that, the next thing which we need to do is go over to our texture setting, click here and add displacement. So once I add a displacement, I think it's best to show you guys with a new layer. I'm just going to go ahead and create a brand new layer here. Increase the brush size just a little bit. Make sure that I have displacement set to on. Let me just drop this down make sure i have this placement turned on and you can notice we have exactly the same parameter because the displacement is actually a single value so it's either white or black you know and in between it doesn't really have a three value so we can use this to go ahead and drive the displacement i think this is low so i'm just going to increase this a little bit more and then we can use this to drive the displacement Hopefully, we can see this if I rotate this, all right? Now, what I don't really uh, like so much, I don't know if it's a problem from me or if this is a problem from the guys at um, Allegorhythmic, is that most times, you guys must have noticed, that most times once you start drawing and you let go, especially if you're making use of the displacement, it takes a while or you need to rotate your canvas or your camera for it to update, all right? It takes a while or you have to rotate this for it to update and so at any point in time you think let's say your displacement is too much what you can do is go over to the shader directly here you can decide to turn this down and you know rotate to update this as it goes and now we're done talking about the displacement let's talk about the compare mask and the compare mask is a bit tricky it's something that you need to wrap your head around and you know get it work for you and how this work is you can use these to compare uh uh, different features together you can use this to compare the same thing so let's say you have a displacement and you have another displacement somewhere else if I just go ahead and you know make sure that I'm using this and I just drop something like this here and turn this out all right I have to turn that out and let's say I uh, increase the brush size uh, here let me just go ahead and turn this up and start painting directly here so I'm just gonna paint something very silly yeah something like this and now I have this here, I can choose to do a simple compare mask. And for you to be able to do that, you need to come through, click here and add mask width height combination. All right. Now, this doesn't mean that it only works for height. It simply means that you can compare based off all the channels that are available when you're working. So if I click through, you can see all the channels that are here and we can just simply select this placement. Okay. So. I really wish this displacement thing uh, happens real quick instead of the slow progression. I wish they fix it in the next update. So once you have this there, the next thing which you would notice is it's comparing the source versus the target. Okay, so this is the source and this is the, tar the, the target. So it's comparing the both uh, layers. And you can use the hardness to change how you want this to travel through. Within this part is where you get to find a histogram of what is going on 
with what you're doing so for something like this i would like to compare this layer with this other layer but now i just want to make uh, them to be within the same tolerance okay so once i do that and start dragging the tolerance all the way up you would notice that i'm beginning to have a mixture of what i have let me turn this on so that you can see that you notice i'm beginning to have a mixture of what i have there and what i have here what i have in the lower layer and what i have in the upper layer if i turn this one off you would notice that this is what i have in the lower layer and if i go ahead and turn this on you would see that this is what i have as i mix the both of them together all right so at the same time you can still switch in between these two layers to get something different and you can also go ahead and play with this hardness right so you can see the more i'm punching this up the more i'm getting those spiky edges if i'm if i punch this down i'm having a much more smoother edge going on around there next off i would like to talk to you guys about comparing this by using colors so now that we've seen the combination with the displacement and you know the other channel let's go ahead and play with this using the color so how we can do that now let's say i want to use two different colors or two different um yeah colors so i can go ahead and just add a simple very simple plain um layer and now i want to drive only the color but now if i click here i need to go ahead and you know click all this off there is a new way you can play with this now directly in substance 2019.1 if you hold down the alt key and just click only that channel gets selected all right so if i just hold down the alt key and click only this channel gets selected if i hold down the alt key and click on this one only these channels get selected all right this is very cool and i think i like it a lot so now i have this here i would like to just simply paint the color of maybe something different so let me just go ahead and pick some purple or some green something far off and then i can come through and just paint directly here so this is our amazing artwork press f so we can view it oh this is so incredible right now we're the amazing artist of the world all right so now we have this here what we can do is we can choose to add a compare mask but this time instead of comparing that we want to compare based off the color and now you can see we're having that histogram going there so i want to say this color uh this source should be greater than what i'm having here so you can see if i start playing with tolerance you can notice how this other one is going all the way down towards the yellow or towards the red compared to once i start pushing this up all right if i still click this and say i want them to be equal that means this would equal whatever color i have down there this source will be equal to whatever color i have down there all right so i'm going to also say i would like this to be less than and you would if i start uh, turning this all the way you will notice that this layer automatically without uh, touching anything you notice that this layer is less than the layer that is down so which gives this other one more uh predominance all right so if i start bringing this down you can see i'm having just a little bit of uh, something like this this is more like what you can find with opacity and i think there's going to be a lot of use cases for this i guess a lot of artists will use something like this and it would make a lot of sense to actually see people use this so this is one of them and this is the compare mask i would like to see what you guys are going to do with this next off i will be talking about the symmetry symmetry is another thing that these guys have made i love the fact that there is now a radial symmetry but there are certain things about the radial symmetry i think they can fix and we're going to talk about those things now having this uh shader ball here i'll go ahead and click on this particular layer and with this layer selected actually i think i should just create a brand new layer directly here and so with this brand new layer selected you need to activate symmetry before that should work so activate symmetry next thing you need to do is click here and activate radial symmetry by default it actually positions this here and you can see you have your cool pivots that you can use here so this is your pivot and i mean this plus sign here is the pivot and you can change the position of this pivot at any point in time so you can see that there i really wish there should be or maybe i really wish they have some sort of um 
pin that you can just select and position where you think your stuff should be because at this point in time if i can just move over to this part at this point in time if i start painting you guys can see what i'm having here it is not to the center and i need to go ahead and you know start eyeballing this thing you know for me to put it in the center so let's go ahead and do that about this point so i really wish there is something that we can just eyeball and just pin there instead of you know pushing sliders back and forth if you want to increase the count you can increase the count from here if you want to um actually play with the angle you can play with the angle from here i i can actually start imagining what people are going to do with this so let's go ahead and actually right click and reduce the scale and let's see what we can make so we can come through and start making cool piece like that all right we can make some cool piece like this we can also just use here and change this how you want it to be you can also increase the manipulator style, uh, size if you want so i can still do this some sort of stuff like that cool so you can make very very amazing radial stuffs directly here so creative things amazing stuff you can find them here and you can use them for anything that you want now that being said i would really really love to try the projection which is the next big thing that these guys have talked about and i'm going to put links in the description so just in case you want to find things for yourself you would be able to uh, locate these things and play with them and use them for every single thing that you want so first and foremost this was done with the old version of substance painter and because it was done with an old version it simply means that this new version is not going to be backward compatible so this project is made available by a sister channel of ours zarif and they make amazing amazing 3d tutorials for cloth design so if you want to learn marvelous designer you should go and check them out show some love to them subscribe if you want to learn stuff about marvelous designer so there is a lot of tutorials on that page you should go ahead and check them out the texture sets now still remains the way it was there is no change it doesn't mean that at this point there is no change to this right there is no change to this texture set i cannot pick up a color like this you know we gotta play with this it's new so i cannot pick up a color like this and choose to paint across it still cannot paint across the surface or you cannot paint across the uh texture set right now you cannot still paint across this and this is what mari does a lot which makes sense i think for a lot of artists so you cannot still paint across this you can just simply paint around and choose a different uh thingy and you know go ahead and start painting directly and start painting directly there at this point you cannot paint across your texture set this done uh the texture set has received some some love which simply means that at this point now you can select all of them at once go over to the texture set uh, settings and you can change the size automatically contrary to what was happening before where you have to select one after the other one after the other one after the other at this point you can select the three of them automatically and change the settings so for this i would go ahead and uh, click here to add a few and let's say we want to project certain things to this object all right so at this point you can choose to just change the color it doesn't really matter so i can choose to change the color to something like this maybe go all the way to blue like something like that uh, you can get this here and if i scroll all the way up to this point you see the, the projection is set to uv all right so it's set to uv and what i can do now is i can go ahead and you know change all these scales now this is not what i'm talking about what i'm talking about is if you click down here you're going to notice we have a planar projection and just clicking on the planar projection gives you this big grid now with this you can select from here which is impressively nice all right which is impressively nice and the fact that they've added the keyboard shortcut is insane so you can use the wer which is very industry standard to change how much you want this projection to be within your scene this is not happening because we've not come through to tell substance that we don't want this to repeat so if i click here and say don't repeat you can see what we have here all right so you can see the amazing amazing thing we have here so i can just go ahead 
and squash this all the way in and let's rotate this to this part let me actually uh, do a simple rotation maybe i can scale this all the way up maybe all the way up squash this in and bring this all the way to this point and so you can see what we can do with this so at any point in time you can just have this working for you now can these go across sets no you cannot happen across sets it can just happen within just this part so now i have this here i can just come through and you know change the color and get something interesting another cool thing though is uh, this does not just restrain to projecting colors alone you can go ahead and also project uh, height information and all that and if you want to simply select one just like i said earlier if you hold on alt and click on color only color stays and these other ones are not active so now we've seen how you can project just a simple thing like this what if you want to project things like alphas what if you want to project materials what if you want to project some other things like that all right what if you want to go ahead and make some you know some very interesting interesting shapes so we'll go ahead and talk about those things now and if you're wondering what this button is this button just gives you the ability to drag this around the object without using this stuff all right so it gives you the ability to drag this around the object without uh, going ahead to use all of this uh, thing that we have here so i think this is quite interesting so we can do that and maybe we can just clap this in a little bit all right so what we can do and you might have also noticed that we have a uh what's it called the manipulator size just in case you have a tiny screen or something like that you can use uh, this and you can also notice that we're having this uh, symmetry thingy going on here so just in case you want to get uh, symmetry happening uh, along the side all right so now this is done the next thing which we're going to do is to talk about how we can you know drive alphas and other other things directly here so what i'm going to do now is i will go ahead and add another field but let's say instead of putting that field there i might decide to put it here maybe something something around this part so how we can do this is we will uh, go ahead and select uh, this texture set that is responsible and I think it's this one all right so this is a texture set that's responsible and I'm going to simply click on the fill node and with the fill selected I can choose to add something I can choose to add uh, an alpha I think we should just go over and add that notification alpha all right so this is going to be a notification alpha you know just so that you guys get notified whenever we upload a new video something like that and yeah and just in case you're not subscribed i think this is the right time to actually subscribe okay so once you have this done i'm going to set this to uh the planar all right so i have this as the planar and i would also like this not to repeat so i'm changing this to none and other things I can do is I can choose to use this instead of using this I can choose to use this to drive the scale so if I turn this down I can get the scale and I can use this particular stuff instead of using this so just in case your, your PC slows out when you're using this because mine actually seems to start doing that you can still use that or you can use this to actually drive this through so how we can do that now is i can pick this up and i can just simply use this to change the position all right so with this you're not having all of those uh, lags but when you're using this stuff here you're having the lags and it's something i really wish they can you know work on and, and fix all right so i'm just going to maybe just push this a little bit more to something like that and a very interesting thing that you would notice is directly with this projection you can see how this fades off like once you're working with this you can see how it fades off nicely it's just incredibly nice all right you can see how it fades off really really nice all right so what i'll do now is i'm just going to go ahead and use this since uh, these values don't really uh, work that much and scale this to what i think i would want so i'm putting that notification icon there and I'll go ahead and just simply use this to position it right on top here. Okay, so with this here, all I can do now 
is I can choose to change the offset depending on what I want. And you can also choose to extend this depending on what you want. So if you want to crop the shape, you can crop the shape. If you want to extend this, you can go ahead and extend this. This is totally up to you and what you want to cre uh, create. So if I choose to say I want to uh, crop the shape and I'm in repeat, it just crops the shape. And if I choose to extend this and I'm in repeat, you can see I'm having a very, very few day here. <laughs> All right. So I just want to simply keep this as cropped shape or you can just totally turn this off. All right. So now we have this done. Of course, you know why we're having this is because we have our texture set set to 1000. I can come through, click here in case you're bothered about all of these edges. I can come through, click here and change this to subtract. OK, so if I change this to subtract, if I make it normal, this is what it is. If I come through and change this to subtract, you can see what I have here. At the same time, I can make this normal. I can go all the way down to this and I can invert this and I can still come through and also change this to subtract. OK, now subtract. We're having this thing here. But if you don't want to deal with all of this, you can just simply change this to screen. And so with screen here, you're getting exactly what it looks like when you have normal. So what we're doing is we're eradicating or we're cleaning out all of these black spots that we have there. So screen and there you have it. So from here on here, henceforth, you can start making incredible, incredible changes. The idea that they have gone ahead to add all of these very cool features is just mind blowing, is mind blowing. And I am very, very appreciative of, the, of, of these things. And I wish like they go ahead and make way more things like this. And if you like this video, you know what to do. If there are certain things I did not go ahead to finish or if there are certain things I didn't talk about, like uh, I know for sure that all of this uh, environment stuff, I didn't cover them because they're basically things that you would just throw in and, and work with them. There is new generators, new smart masks, new brushes. Go ahead, play with them, check them out, see what works for you. And so I would like to know what you guys think about this. Which of these features are the most amazing feature for you? Which of them do you love the most? Tell me what you think about all of these things in the comment section below. And if you like this video, you know what to do. Hit the like button, share with a friend, subscribe if you're not turned on notification. And until I see you guys next time with a tutorial, review, updates, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.